Welcome to Microsoft Mechanics. Coming up, I'll walk you through Microsoft Teams room setup, admin configurations, and getting your in-room consoles connected to Microsoft Teams. Now, Microsoft Teams room combines a digital workspace for Microsoft Teams with dedicated Microsoft certified devices for rich audio and video to enable first-class meeting experiences, whether you're joining remotely or from in the room. There are multiple hardware options certified for Teams available from our partners that range from simple integrated sound bars with a streamlined set of components to larger systems that include multiple microphones, speakers, cameras, and displays. Today we'll focus on the setup and configuration of a medium-sized room connecting to Microsoft 365-based services using Azure Active Directory authentication. Now it consists of the components I just mentioned, plus dedicated compute device, tabletop console, and cables to connect participant devices for content presentation. Now let's start with our in-room configuration. There are a couple things to plan for before you start mounting equipment and running cables in the room. First, we'll need to ensure the availability of wired ethernet in the meeting room with sufficient bandwidth for video and screen sharing. In most cases, in-room compute devices will need to access Microsoft 365 services. Importantly, these devices will need dynamic IP addresses using DHCP at install time and cannot use static IP addresses until the initial configuration is complete. Now to make sure that your access to Microsoft 365 is set up correctly, you can reference aka.ms slash m365 ports and IPs. Now beyond ethernet, the room will also need power outlets, ideally at the display and at the table. You need to provide your own display, which can be one or two displays with 1080p resolution. Now it's recommended that your speakers are placed just below the wall mounted display and the camera lens should be at eye level for seated participants. Your cable runs are gonna vary based on the selected system. So some will have integrated compute units with a tabletop console and others will have separate compute. If your system has a separate compute unit, placing it behind the display can help in creating clean and short cable runs to the display, speakers, and camera. Optionally, you can share your laptop screen with the meeting via HDMI into the console. Now, microphones are placed on the ceiling or at the table and also typically connect via USB or network cables. Once all components are installed and connected per manufacturer specifications, we can then move on to the service configuration of Microsoft 365. Now the sequence here is really up to you. If you're configuring multiple rooms, then you can perform the following steps prior to the room equipment installation. And these steps, by the way, can also be automated via PowerShell. Now in this case, I'll use the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. First, you'll need to create a resource account for the room. In the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, you'll navigate to resources, then rooms and equipment. Click on Add a Resource Mailbox and leave its type as Room. Then give it a name, an email address, and optionally room capacity, location, and a phone number. Finally, you can click Add and create the resource. Now this is going to add the resource to your directory service and provision it an email address on your domain and you'll use this later to sign into the console. Now by default, room resources will appear to all users in the organization and will automatically accept or decline booking requests based on its availability. Now here you can edit booking options and delegates as needed, or you can return to this later. Next, you'll need to assign it a license and reset the password in users, active users. And the recommended license here is called meeting room. And if you don't currently have an allocation of these licenses available, you can find them by going to billing, then purchase services, then searching for meeting. And to set the password, it's the same process as any user password reset. You just click on the key icon and choose whether you want an auto-generated password or one that you define. Okay, so now your room equipment is set up and you have a room account and password to log in with. You're ready to set up the console and sign in to Microsoft 365 services. Now the console runs Windows 10 Enterprise IoT with a custom UBI setup experience. Now I'll walk you through setup for connecting to Microsoft Teams using cloud-based authentication. First, we'll see the Windows 10 native screens for language and keyboard, then the experience moves on to the Microsoft Teams Room app. Under EULA, we'll accept the license terms. In account, we'll use the mail address that we created when we configured the room resource, then we'll enter the password and enable modern authentication. 
Now in supported meeting mode, select Skype for Business in Microsoft Teams default. In the advanced page, we'll see an exchange sign-in, and here you'll use the same email that you used in the account page. The next two fields don't need to be configured in our scenario, so you'll tap next. Finally, on the finish page, you can tap finish and you're done. So now the console is set up, but let me dive into a few optional configurations to tailor the system to your needs. Tap on more, then settings, and here you'll need an admin account to log in to make changes. In advance, we'll see the fields that we just configured in Ubi. And in meetings, you'll see options for automatic screen sharing. Now this means when a laptop connects to the room's input, it will automatically share the output to a running meeting. Then you'll see leave meetings automatically if everyone has left. And that means the room will automatically sign off for meetings if all other participants have left. In device, you can toggle into dual monitor mode where video streams are shown on one monitor and content on another. You can also leave Bluetooth beaconing and automatically accept proximity-based meeting invitations enabled, and this will allow your devices to know if they're in a Microsoft Teams room and quickly add the room into a meeting. Now in peripherals, you'll find settings for microphones, speakers, and optional content camera. In select a theme, you can select from multiple theme options, including your own custom theme, to configure the background look and feel. Now there are a few built-in themes. For example, you can choose from my favorite, Purple Paradise. And as a best practice, you'll want to go into Windows Settings and change the default admin password. And once you're done, tap Save and Exit. Now the device will display any scheduled meetings as well as options for a new meeting, dial pad, present, and more. Here you can see there's already a meeting scheduled. Now to make sure everything's working in the room, just tap the Join button and then we can hang up. So now the room is ready to host meetings. So that was a quick overview of installing, configuring, and setting up a Microsoft Teams room. Of course, there are many other hardware options and ways to configure backend services and authentication. Check out aka.ms slash mtrdocs for detailed guidance and additional configuration options. So stay tuned to our playlist at aka.ms slash mechanicsmtr. Thanks for watching.